Today we're starting chapter three, and our first section is on solving two-step equations. I want to kind of reacquaint you with the solving equation and talk about how I'd like you to show your work. So write down the heading on your paper, and let's get started. We're going to start today with a quick review of one-step equations, and here you see three of them here. Right? Some of these you could probably solve, hopefully all of them you could solve in your head. Um, but anyway, I want to talk to you about the algorithm for solving these. So why don't you go ahead and try to solve them. Press pause and we'll see how you do. Okay, here are the answers that you should have gotten. Okay, and let's see how I would go about doing that. All right, you always want to kind of do the inverse operation. So if you're looking here at um, the variable, that variable is being multiplied by 9. The inverse operation to multiply by 9 is to divide by 9. Whatever you do on one side, you do on the other side. So you can see on the left here that 9 divided by 9 is 1, and so you're left with y equals 36 divided by 9, or 4. Okay, looking at the second one, again, I always want you to look at that variable and say, oh, it's being divided by 7. I know the inverse operation to divide 7 is to multiply 7, so I'm going to multiply 7 on both sides. Okay, on the left-hand side, you could see where those 7s would cross-cancel, leaving us with a plain n on the left and 35 on the right. Okay, hopefully this is coming back to you now, the inverse operation. So here we have the z, and we have a minus 15 next to it. The inverse operation that will cancel out the minus is plus. All right, and we're left with our answer, z equals 50. Okay, let's go on to two steps now. Okay, copy down just this equation, 2x plus 13 equals 23. And we want to work towards having the variable isolated or alone on one side and the numbers on the other. And to do that, we're going to use those inverse operations. So if you're not sure what I mean by inverse operations, let's take a look. Oops. Let's take a look. All right, inverse operations undoes mathematical operations. So for example, subtraction undoes addition, addition undoes subtraction, multiplication undoes division, and division undoes multiplication. You could write those down if you're not remembering them. Okay, if you do totally remember them, don't worry about writing it down. Okay, so let's go back. Here's our equation now. You want to begin with the addition and subtraction and then move on to multiplication and division. So in this particular problem, we're going to do the inverse of add 13 first, and that would be to subtract 13. And we show it just in this way underneath the problem. Okay, then we're going to rewrite the problem. Over on the left-hand side, the 13 and the negative 13 have canceled out, leaving us with just the 2x, and 23 take away 13 is 10. Okay, next up, I'm still looking at that variable, and I'm seeing it's being multiplied by 2. So I am going to do the inverse operation, divide by 2, and I'm showing it just like that. All right, on the left, the 2 divided by 2 gives you 1, so you're left with a plain x, and 10 divided by 2 is 5. Whenever you do solve an equation like this, it's a great idea to go back and plug it back in. So I'm saying that the answer here is 5. If I plug that back in the original equation, 2 times 5 is 10 plus 13 equals 23. And I've checked it. It took me about two seconds. So it's a great idea always to check. All right, let's do some together. I'm going to do the odd, and then I want you to do the even on your own. Okay, so the first thing I always like to do is, you know I'm a big fan of adding the opposite because I think it prevents mistakes. All right, now, how do you get rid of adding a negative 7? you would add a positive 7. A negative 7 and a positive 7 will cancel each other out. And of course, and whatever I do on one side, I have to do on the other side. And I always line it up so it's ready to add on the right. On the left-hand side, I have left only a negative 3x. And then on the right-hand side, an 18. OK, I'm going to try next to get rid of this times negative 3 by dividing by negative 3. And I get x equals negative 6. Okay, just to check this really quickly, all right, if I know x equals negative 6, I'm going to put that into wherever I see x in the original equation. All right, so negative 3 times negative 6 is 18, and 18 plus negative 7 is 11. Okay, I want you to try number 2, and we'll check it together tomorrow. Let's keep going. All right, problem number 3. All right, I'm going to get rid of that addition and subtraction first. So the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of this plus 13, and I do that by adding a negative 13. Okay, um, and then on the left-hand side, I have only the x over 2 left, and on the right-hand side, I have 8. 
I know again I'm looking at that variable. It's being divided by 2. So I'm going to multiply by 2, that inverse operation. Whatever I do to one side, I do to the other. You can see these 2's canceling out. And it leaves me with a plain x on the left and a 16 on the right. Okay, that checking step can be done in your head sometimes. I say to myself, 16 divided by 2 is 8, and 8 plus 13 is 21, but I am checking my work. I'm going to leave 4 for you to try. So copy it down, give it a try, and when you're ready, let's go on. All right, number 5. Um, actually, I'm going to try, I'm going to do 6, and I want you to do number 5. All right, so number six is a little bit more difficult, but we're just because it's got fractions in it, but we're going to follow the same process. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is add the opposite. Then we're going to try to get rid of that addition or subtraction first. I get rid of that by adding a half. Do you see where a negative a half and a half cancel out? Whatever I do to one side, I do to the other. And that leaves me with 5x over 4 is equal to 6 and a half. Okay, so then the next step is... Um, to get rid of this divide by 4. Okay, I get rid of dividing by 4 by multiplying by 4. That's the inverse operation. And just like before, those cancel out. And on the right-hand side, I'm going to multiply by 4 also. So this is going to take me a little bit of work over here because I know when I multiply fractions, I need to multiply not um, mixed numbers, but I'm going to change this one into an improper fraction times 4 over 1. Okay, I'm going to cross-cancel because I like doing that. I think it's easier. All right, and what I get on the right is 26 over 1, or just plain 26. Okay, and after the canceling goes on on the left, what I have left there is a 5x. All right, again, I'm looking at that variable and saying it's being multiplied by 5. So I'm going to divide by 5 on both sides. All right, and what you get is plain x on the left, and just this fraction, 26 fifths, is a fine answer as long as it's reduced. So 26 fifths. All right, don't forget to try number five on your own. Okay, then um, I'm going to do number seven. All right, this is that same idea. I want to get rid of the addition or subtraction first. So I'm going to do this by adding a negative three to both sides. And I have 11 equals 0.75b. Okay, then um, I want to get rid of the times 0.75. You could do that by dividing by 0.75. Okay, so in order to do that, you could work at this with a decimal. So you could put 11 in here, divide by 0.75. Okay, and of course, you're going to move the decimal two places, move the decimal two places, and bring the decimal straight up. Okay, so you could work on that division problem with decimals. I prefer, however, to work with fractions. Okay, I think fractions are an easier way to go. So I'm going to look at this equation as 11 equals 3 fourths b. Okay, and one of the ways that you can get rid of a multiply by 3 fourths is to divide by 3 fourths. All right, and then divide by 3 fourths. Okay. An even easier way to do that, because next up is going to be 11 divided by 3 fourths, and the next thing you're going to have to do there is leave change flip or multiply by the reciprocal. So I could do that 11 over 1 times 4 over 3, okay, or I could just do that from the beginning. So from now on, I think it's a good idea to save time when you see a variable being multiplied by a fraction. Okay. Instead of thinking of the inverse operation as dividing by that fraction, you might save yourself some time and see the inverse operation as multiplying by the reciprocal. Okay. Do you see how that um, inverse property of multiplication says 3 fourths times 4 thirds is just going to give you 1? And so what you're left over here with is just 1b. And that identity property of multiplication says one times anything is just itself. So do you see how multiplying by the reciprocal gets us down to a plain variable? All right. Then, of course, whatever you do to one side, you do to the other side. All right. And I find this to be much faster because I can just get my answer 44 thirds 
and it's reduced, so I'm done. And I prefer working with fractions rather than having to do that long division problem. Okay? It's up to you. You can work in either way. So I want you to try problem 8 now on your own, and I will see you in class tomorrow.